Hallelujah, Jesus. Yes, oh God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Wow, Father. Hallelujah. What a beautiful day, God. Hallelujah, Jesus. We give you glory, Jesus. We worship you in this place, oh God. Hallelujah, Jesus. We come here for you, Jesus. We come here to hear your voice, God. Hallelujah. Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes. Yes. Just let your spirit flow in this place, God. Let your spirit flow in this place, God. Let your spirit flow inside of us, God. We come before you this morning as empty vessels. Empty vessels, empty of ourselves, empty of our old ways, empty of past knowledge, wisdom that's not of you. We come before you empty, just wanting to receive. So pour in, pour in this morning, Father, pour in your spirit. Pour it in fresh like never before, God. We receive of whatever you want to say, Jesus. We're just here for you to hear your voice. There's nothing better than to be in your presence. There's nothing better than to hear your voice, to have you speak to us, oh God. Yes, Jesus, pour out your power, pour out your truth. Let it be your truth and nothing but your truth. Continue to unveil the plots and schemes of the enemy. Satan, the devil, the accuser who binds up, who kills, who destroys, who accuses all day long. Reveal your truth. Reveal what you want. Reveal what you are calling us to do in this season. Speak to us, God, not out of our own wisdom. But what you say, Father. We're willing to let go of old ways. We're willing to let go of how it used to be. And we want you to enter and we invite you into our lives, into every area of our lives, into this service here this morning, into this prayer, into this Bible study, into this, into, into all that we do, Jesus. We just invite you in. We're going to let you reign as king over our emotions, over our minds, over all that we do. Lead us, Holy Spirit. Guide us, Holy Spirit. Teach us your ways because your ways are so much higher. They're so much more beautiful. They're so much more better. You're a God of the supernatural. You're a God of the miracles. And we thank you, God, so we just want to know your ways. We want to know your thoughts. Let it be fresh. Doesn't matter if we know the verses, but we want it all to be fresh today. For whatever you want to say, God. Yes. Hallelujah, Jesus. We give you our praises. We give you our glory, God. And just help us, oh God, to be still. Always to be still before you. So we can hear always to seek you and to seek your ways before we do anything. We want to move in relation with you, Jesus, in relationship with your Holy Spirit, in connection with your Holy Spirit. We want to move like that. But in order to do so, we need to pray. We need to ask and invite you in. So we just collectively invite you into our lives and we surrender all. Take it all, Jesus. It's your life. It's no longer us who live, but it's you that lives inside of us. Oh, Jesus. Hallelujah, God. Jesus. So worthy. So worthy to be praised. So worthy. So worthy. Set us free, God. Whatever we need to be set free of this morning, come and set your people free, God. Let your truth set us free. Do the healing. Do the restoration. Bring the new. Bring the fresh. Whatever you need to do, God. We surrender. And we believe. We have faith. 
we have nothing but faith in this house because we've seen your miracles. We've seen the mighty move of your hand. We've seen how you showed up time and time again, day after day. Increase the faith, God. Do the increase, whatever increase you need to do in each one's life individually here this morning. We just ask Jesus that you do it, God, not out of our own strength, not out of our own, but out of your strength, out of your spirit, God, that you provide and that you supply abundantly to all who are in need. Hallelujah, Jesus. It's in your mighty name, Jesus, that we pray. We give you all the praise, the glory, and the honor. And it's in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Praise God. God bless you, church. Welcome in another blessed morning to get into God's word. God was really speaking to me about discerning times and seasons. Discerning the season that we're in right now, discerning what God is taking us through, what God is showing us, what he wants us to do in our life in this season. So discerning the times and the seasons for each one individually, because it's different for us all, and then operating in our season to the full potential, and then also just understanding the balance the balance that God gives. Because I know we're all in. I know we're all in for Jesus in this house. But God was been teaching me and showing me a lot about balance, about balance, about really just seeking him in everything that I do every day. Because I don't know. I don't know what God wants today. I don't know what God wants to share I don't know his ways. His ways are higher. His ways are better. So I need to seek. I need to seek his ways. I need to ask him. I need to pray. And I think back to my workflow in high school, how I used to operate and run my life. I'm very goal oriented, very goal driven, and I just want to knock things out. And I live my life that way. Everything that I did, it's, it's I'm going to do this. I'm going to knock it out. I'm going to move on to the next. Even in my relationships, my relationships were like tasks that I knocked off on my list. My relationships and my, my friendships, the, the people who I was with, it was like a task that needed to be checked out. So I could just receive something from them or maybe so that way I could just pour out. I could just go and entertain people for a bit. During the week, I'm going to be focused on school. Friday night's going to come around. I'm going to play in a football game. And then after that, I'm going to give myself a little time slot for my friends just so that way I could just meet my desire. And it was so transactional. But God, God is helping me understand his ways. And how many of us, right? I know me, sometimes we treat our relationship with Jesus like that. Maybe we just give him the morning. We give him the night. We, we put him in our task. We put him in our checkbox. But God wants to shift seasons and teach us how to really build a relationship with him. And this was, you know, it's, it's been hard for me to understand because I've never lived my life like this. I, I've never really built a relationship. Friends would, would come and go. I, I never really held on to, to people. I had a best friend and he left and he moved away. And then I had another best friend and he left and he moved away. But God is really just showing me personally, how to develop relationships. And this is something that's interesting to me because I've been asking God, God, what do you want me to do? God, I, wanna, I just want to go live. I want to preach your word. I just want to work for you. And God is just shutting things down so that way I could build friendships in my life. So that way I could build something different, something new. And in doing so, he's teaching me what it means to have a relationship with Jesus. 
to really seek him in all of his ways. Let's go to Ecclesiastes 3. Just to be able to go all in on what God wants for us in this season. Everything has its time. Ecclesiastes 3 verse 1. To everything, there is a season. A time for every purpose under heaven. A time to be born. A time to die. A time to plant. A time to pluck what is planted. A time to kill. A time to heal. A time to break down. A time to build up. Sometimes we just need to be broken down. We need to be broken down so that way God can build us up stronger. There's a time and a season for everything. A time to weep. A time to laugh. A time to mourn. A time to dance. A time to cast away stones. And a time to gather stones. A time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing. So we want to know God's ways because we don't want to be embracing when God is calling us to refrain from embracing and vice versa, we want to operate in the season that God is calling us to be in. A time to gain and a time to lose. Right? How many of us, we just want to gain? We just want to gain and gain and gain. We just want more and more and more, but there's a time to lose. And really that, that loss that we think is a loss, it's always a gain. God always gives and increases supernaturally. A time to keep, time to throw away, a time to tear, time to sow, time to keep silence, time to speak. God's always, I believe, showing us when to speak and when to keep silent. A time to love, time to hate, a time of war, a time of peace. There's even a time to make war. There's a time to hate. What profit, verse 9, what profit has the worker from that in which he labors? I have seen the God-given tasks with which the sons of men are to be occupied. He has made everything beautiful in its time. All is being made beautiful by God in his perfect time. We just have to submit and surrender to the season that he is calling us in. And he will do the rest. Also, he has put eternity in their hearts, except that no one can find out the work that God does from beginning to end. We really don't know God's work. We don't know his ways. They're so much better. They're so much higher. We just have to live in submission to the Holy Spirit. I know nothing is better for them than to rejoice and to do good in their lives. And also that every man should eat and drink and enjoy the good of all his labor. It is the gift of God. Even this verse really spoke to me. There's a time to eat and drink and, and enjoy the good of your labor. It's God's gift. This was, you know, hard for me because I'm always saving. Like growing up and being in college, I always wanted to save every dollar. I just wanted to save and I, I never ate out. I ate out maybe once every three months, just always cooking, always saving. And, and God just really teaching me, hey, it's his money, his finances, and it's his time. And, and it's good. It's good to go and eat and drink and enjoy. It's good. I know that whatever God does, it shall be forever. Nothing can be added to it and nothing taken from it. God does it that men should fear before him, that which is has already been and what is to be has already been. And God requires an account of what is past. Amen. Let's go to Proverbs. Proverbs 25. And God was really speaking to me a lot of different verses in Proverbs. So we can just go into Proverbs 25. And we're just going to kind of jump around as the Spirit leads it. 
just showing me different verses about discerning the times and seasons and, and you know, how things aren't in alignment if we're operating out of our season. If we're loving when it's a time to hate. If we're not embracing what God is calling us to embrace in that season. Because God, whatever, whatever God has for each and every one of us, we want to embrace it to the fullest. Because seasons will change. Seasons will shift. But what God has placed before us, we've got to enjoy and embrace. Proverbs 25, verse 20. Like one who takes away a garment in cold weather and like vinegar on soda is one who sings songs to a heavy heart. You may think I'm just, you know, I'm singing a song. I'm, I'm singing a song, but the, the heart is heavy. It's not the right time to sing that song. So when you're singing that song to that heavy heart, it's like taking away that garment in the cold weather. They need that garment in that season, in that cold weather. So there's a time and a place for everything. So we're just going to look at different verses. Proverbs 25, 28. This one's a little bit different, but it really spoke to me. Whoever has no rule over his own spirit is like a city broken down without walls. Praise God, he gives us rule over our spirit. He gives a spirit of self-control, right? Not of fear, not of anxiety, not of doubt, not of worry, but he gives a sound mind, he gives self-control, and he gives us a spirit of power and of love. And the more I, I walk through my life and I live my life, I see how much I have no control over. I really don't have control over anything. God chooses what he wants for me because I live in full surrender. But God says we have rule over our spirit. When the ungodly emotions come through, when the other thoughts that aren't from God come through, we have rule over our spirit. God has, is really rising us up as warriors. In this church specifically, we have rule over our spirit. We don't need to give any power to the enemy in our certain situation. We just need to recognize what's from God, what's not from God. And what God calls us to embrace in this season, we need to embrace it. And, and what he wants us to let go of in this season, we need to let go of. And sometimes the, the seasons, they shift very fast. Tomorrow may be different from yesterday. Each and every day, we, we really don't know. We got to ask God and seek him daily, a daily relationship. There's daily shifts. God is just moving so much in this church, in this ministry, in the shop. Seems like so much is just always shifting. So I'm always asking God, what does he want? Proverbs 25, verse 13. Like the cold of snow in time of harvest is a faithful messenger to those who send him. For he refreshes the soul of his masters. I like this one because the cold of snow in the time of harvest, just it, it spoke to me, it, it hit me. Because when I think about the time of harvest, I think about being out in the sun and just sweating. And, and I think of those long brimmed hats, just getting that covering from the sun as, you know, you just harvest and you just collect what God is calling you to collect. But here we see the cold of snow, just like the snow just falling on you in that harvest is a faithful messenger to those who send him. For he refreshes the soul of his masters. I said, God, I want to refresh some souls. I want to give some souls the word that they need. I want to speak the words of God. And when you're not calling me to speak, when you're not calling me to share with that person in that season, it doesn't matter who it is, if it's my family, and you don't want me to speak to my family, if it's old friends who have always known, I'm not going to do it. But God, when I speak, I want my words to, to refresh souls. Proverbs 27, 14. He who blesses his friend with a loud voice, rising early in the morning, it will be counted a curse to him. Right? You're thinking, I'm just blessing. I'm speaking a loud blessing. I'm blessing my friend. I just want to bless them. 
But God says, hey, it's early in the morning and your voice is loud. Hold on to your blessings, right? Keep your blessings because it's not the right season. It's not the right time for that right now. Let's go back to Proverbs 25. Verse 12. Like an earring of gold and an ornament of fine gold, is a wise rebuker to an obedient ear. Proverbs 26, 3 to 5. A whip for the horse, a bridle for the donkey, and a rod for the fool's back. So the whip is for the horse, the bridle is for the donkey, the rod for the fool's back. But do not answer a fool according to his folly, lest you also be like him. Answer a fool according to his folly, lest he, he be wise in your own eyes. So even who we speak to, right? There's, there's, a, you know, there's a time to rebuke and there's a time to give wisdom. And there's, there's a person to give wisdom to. And then there's other people who just aren't going to receive it. Time to speak and a time to be silent. Proverbs 27, 1. Do not boast about tomorrow, for you do not know what a day may bring forth. We don't know. We don't know what's in tomorrow. We don't know what's in the next day. We don't always know what's in the seasons ahead. Sometimes God's going to show us. He's going to give us wisdom beforehand, showing us how to move in the next season. But most of the time, we really just don't know. The way that God moves, it's so beautiful. It's so spectacular. And sometimes he's just going to shift things just like that. And we always want to be in his sovereign will. Operating in his sovereign will. I just, I feel right now like I'm so in God's sovereign will. And it's so beautiful to operate in that, just to, to be in the spirit. And it's just because I'm seeking God, praying like never before, seeking him in everything I do. God wants to strengthen the relationship with Jesus. He wants us to call out upon him all throughout the day like that friend who's just always there, always walking with us. Proverbs 27, 18. Whoever keeps the fig tree will eat its fruit. So he who waits on his master will be honored. Whoever keeps the fig tree, the whole tree. I first read this and I, I read whoever keeps the figs. But if you're just holding on to the figs, you're just holding on to the fruit. You're going to eat and you're going to eat and you're going to run out of fruit. And you're going to go hungry again. So we need the whole fig tree. We need the whole system. We need the roots dug deep. And we need the trunk to hold up the branches. So that way we can bear fruit and keep on eating. Just waiting on Jesus. Waiting on our master who honors us and upholds us. Proverbs 27, 23. Be diligent to know the state of your flocks and attend to your herds. There's something that God has given you. There's something that he has called you to steward. You have a flock that the Lord has given you, a herd, and he wants you to tend to it carefully, diligently attending what he wants you to attend to in this season. For riches are not forever. The crown does not endure to all generations. Riches pass away. The crown that you have in this season can be gone in the next season. Saul had the crown. He lost the crown. David had the crown. He passed it on to Solomon. When the hay, verse 25, when the hay is removed and the tender grass shows itself and the herbs of the mountains are gathered in, 
The lambs will provide your clothing and the goats the price of a field. So the goats, the lambs, the, the herd, it's going to provide, it's going to feed your soul. Not the crown. You shall have enough goats, milk for your food, for the, for the food of your household and the nourishment of your maidservants. So we really got to attend and, and steward what God wants us to steward faithfully. God really doesn't require much, but faithfulness and obedience in the season that he's calling us in. Think of uh, Micah 6, 8. What does the Lord require of you? But to do justly, to love what is right, to walk humbly before our God. We serve such a simple God. His ways are so much higher and his ways are so much better. And the understanding and the wisdom that he pours in just blows my mind. But God wants everything to be simple. I believe he wants to make following Jesus simple. He wants to make living for him simple. There's going to be trials and challenges. We're going to suffer a lot. That's what the word of God says. Hey, you're going to suffer. You're going to go through fiery challenges and trials. Don't consider it strange that you're going through trials because it's all a part of the journey. Just continue to trust in me. Place your faith in me. Give every burden unto me. Pray to me. Give your voice to me. Lift, op just open up and speak to me. I'm there. I'll take the burden. I'll take you in this season. I'll pull you through this season. And I'm going to give you wisdom for the next season because now you know how the enemy operates. Now you know that that enemy planted that seed in your mind and you took that seed and you held on to that seed and you, you started sowing into that seed. So it became an emotion that's not from God. And now it's taking you and it's tearing you down. But now you know better. You know that thought. You know how the enemy is trying to enter into your mind so you can recognize it. You could shut it down. You can pray a spiritual warfare prayer and you can just give the glory to Jesus. Give Jesus the power because Jesus is head over all principalities, over all powers. We understand it's a spiritual war. We don't wrestle against flesh and blood, but against dark powers, against principalities, spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. But God wants us to bear fruit. He wants us to be in the Holy Spirit always, always operating out of peace and of love and of joy and of a sound mind. He says you can have the sound mind no matter the season, no matter what you're going through. You can still have peace. You can still have a sound mind. So we, we bear the fruits of God. If it doesn't produce fruit, if it's not producing the fruit of God, recognize it. Recognize how it started and uproot that seed from the root. And next time it wants to come, you just shut it down. You say, not today, Satan. I'm moving forward in God's presence. I'm going to bear the Holy Spirit. I'm going to keep my peace. I'm going to keep my joy. And I'm just going to keep moving forward for the glory of God. Hallelujah. Let's go to Luke 12. Luke 12, 54. So it's also, it's a command of Jesus to discern the times. Luke 12, 54. Then Jesus also said to the multitudes, whenever you see a cloud rising out of the west, immediately you say, shower is coming, and so it is. And when you see the south wind blow, you say there will be hot weather. And there is. I love how it's so specific, the south wind, right? The wind that comes from the south. When you see it come from the south, when it blows from that direction, you say, there it is. Verse 56, hypocrites. 
You can discern the face of the sky and of the earth, but how is it that you do not discern this time? Yes, and why, even of yourselves, do you not judge what is right? Corinthians says, he who is spiritual judges all things. There's this thing in, you know, uh, Christianity, a lot of American Christianity. Hey, you're judging, you're judging. Right? But as Christians, we're called to judge. We're called to discern. Right? He who is spiritual judges all things. We discern all things, but we're rightly judged by no one. Because we know how we walk before God. We walk in obedience. We walk in his paths. Right? Not casting stones on other people. Not judging unbelievers. Always bearing love. But we're called to discern and really discern the times and the seasons. That's what Jesus says here. And he's actually rebuking them. Because they know the word of God. Right? These Pharisees, they know the word of God. They can recite the scripture. But they can't discern the times and the seasons. Yes, and why? Even of yourselves, do you not judge what is right? When you go with your adversary to the magistrate, make every effort along the way to settle with him, lest he drag you to the judge, the judge deliver you to the officer, and the officer throw you into prison. I tell you, you shall not depart from there till you have paid the very last night. So we always want to be at peace with all people, always, really forgiving everyone, always. We don't know when Jesus is going to come. When we look and we discern the times and the seasons right now, when we see what's going on in the world, when we look at the birth pains that are in Matthew 24, we know that Jesus is coming. We know that the time is more near now than ever before. So we're very watchful, always keeping our lamps lit and always making peace with all people. When Jesus comes, I want to be at peace. I want to be at peace. Let's go to Matthew 24. Verse 32. The parable of the fig tree. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, God. Thank you, God, for just speaking whatever you need to speak to each one individually. Matthew 24, 32. Now learn this parable from the fig tree. When its branch has already become tender and puts forth leaves, you know that summer is near. So you also, when you see all these things, Know that it is near at the doors. Assuredly, I say to you, this generation will by no means pass away till all these things take place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will by no means pass away. So what Jesus said was true because he, he's talking about the end times, right? He's talking about the last hour in the end times. But he was also talking about the destruction of Jerusalem in 70 AD when Jerusalem fell. So he was right in saying that all these things will happen and they are still yet to happen. But there's also a certain situation. It's different for each and every one of us in our lives, right? We look at what's happening around us and we discern the fig tree, the the, the leaves, Right, Whether they're tender, whether they're bringing forth fruit, and we just look at our situation, who God has called us with, who he has surrounded us with, the work that he has set out before us, and we pray over it so we can be a faithful steward and know and discern what he is calling us to in this season. Let's keep going. Verse 36. But of that day and hour, no one knows, not even the angels of heaven But my father only, but as the days of Noah were, so also will be the coming of the son of man be. For as in the days before the flood, there were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered the ark and did not know until the flood came and took them all away. So also be the coming of the son of man. I want to be like Noah. 
Noah spent years preparing that ark. Noah knew the season that he was in. And he was all in just building that ark because God spoke to him. And what God spoke to him was so firm that he was all in. It didn't matter what everyone else said. It didn't matter if they said, hey, you really think there's going to be a flood? It hasn't rained in three years. But no one knew because God spoke to him. So he went all in and he built that ark and he was prepared years ahead for what was to come. We want to be like Noah, discerning the times and the seasons in our work and where we're at in our lives. So we can know how God is calling us to move. And when he speaks to us and shows us clearly we want to operate in that fully to our full potential because that is what the faithful steward does. But we got to be balanced. We got to be balanced in our lives. Which you thought you were going to do that night, God may shift it that night. Which you thought you were going to do that morning, God may shift it. So we pray and we're still before him discerning, right? Big picture and also the daily Maybe Noah was ready, you know, he was ready to build the arch. But maybe God was saying, hey, you got to put in some, some posts first, right? You're not yet there. So it, it, we seek him daily. And we also understand what he is doing in the big picture and in the seasons ahead. Verse 40, then two men will be in the field. One will be taken and the other left. Two women will be grinding at the mill. One will be taken and the other left. Watch, therefore, for you do not know what hour your Lord is coming. It says what hour. It doesn't say what season, what day. It says what hour. You don't even know what hour. You don't know what God wants to do the next hour. God may touch you to speak to someone after you leave here in the next hour, and you're going to touch and save a soul. That's why we need this relationship with Jesus. We need the Holy Spirit leading and guiding all things that we do because we don't even know what the next hour looks like. You do not know what hour your Lord is coming. So watch. Watch. Have that relationship all throughout the day. But know this, that if the master of the house had known what hour the thief would come, he would have watched and not allowed his house to be broken into. Right? If you can know the schemes of the enemy, if you can know, right, maybe weaknesses in your life, maybe if you can look back at past demonic cycles, cycles that you've been through, right? This thought always comes about when you're doing this thing. So now you know and you can watch so you can shut that down. Therefore, you also be ready for the son of man is coming at an hour you do not expect. Praise God. Let's go. One last verse, Matthew 22. Matthew 22, one last story, the parable of the wedding feast. And Jesus answered and spoke to them again by parables and said, The kingdom of heaven is like a certain king who arranged a marriage for his son, sent out his servants to call those who were invited to the wedding, and they were not willing to come. Again, he sent out other servants saying, Tell those who are invited, See, I have prepared my dinner, my oxen and fatted calf are killed, and all things are ready. Come to the wedding. Praise God. He, he, he prepares it all. All things are ready. The oxen, the fatted calf is killed. It's all ready. It's all prepared for us. Verse 5, but they made light of it and went their way, one to his own farm, another to his business. And the rest seized his servants, treated them spitefully, and killed them. But when the king heard about it, he was furious. He sent out his armies, destroyed those murders, and burned up their city. Wow. 
Then he said to those servants, the wedding is ready, but those who were invited were not worthy. Therefore, go into the highways and as many as you find, invite to the wedding. So those servants went out into the highways and gathered together all whom they found, both bad and good, and the wedding hall was filled with guests. But when the king came in to see the guests, he saw a man there who did not have on a wedding garment. So he said to him, friend, how come you come in here without a wedding garment? And he was speechless. Then the king said to the servants, bind him hand and foot, take him away, cast him into the outer darkness. There will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. For many are called, but few are chosen. Praise God, he's all chosen us here. He's all chosen us. He's all made us all worthy by his blood. We've picked up the calling. We've answered the calling to follow Jesus. And he has made us worthy by his blood. So we want to be clothed with that garment, with that garment of righteousness, that garment of light that is so bright it knows no darkness. And as we pursue this relationship with Jesus, he just makes us new day by day as we seek him hour after hour. We don't know what the next hour will bring, but we seek Jesus day by day, moment by moment, hour by hour, seeking his ways, getting his understanding for the season that he has called us to be in so we can operate in that season to the fullest. And the glory ahead, the glory ahead is just, it's so bright. It's just like, like we're on this path and it, God's glory is just shining right there. And I just can't even look back at the past. You know when you just you clean out your camera roll and you just get rid of out that junk, you sell the old stuff. I can't look back, but I can't even look to the side. I don't, I don't even care about the pebbles that are over on the side or the flowers that are on the side of the road because the glory ahead, it is so beautiful. That we just fixate and focus on it and just continue to move forward daily. And we recognize this glory and the enemy wants to come when we're on our path and he wants to knock us off that path. So we got to discern and know what he is trying to do, how he is trying to attack us in this season to pull us out of God's will because the enemy is working and the enemy is working overtime because his days are short. But we're focused on the glory that's ahead. And we just want to move with wisdom. We want to move with God's wisdom, not with our own understanding, but seeking God in all of his ways, because his ways are so much higher than we can ever ask, think, or imagine. Praise God. Well, thank you, Jesus. I'm just going to close out in prayer. I believe, God, you spoke to each person individually what you needed to say, God, to all who had questions, Jesus. So I thank you, God, for speaking and showing us, unveiling, God, and, and revealing as we continue to seek you after we leave. Just continue to really show us the season that you have called us forth right now. We want to really know and understand this season. And when you show us that season, God, just make it so firm so we can just run with it. Even if it's not like how we used to operate in the past seasons, even if it's completely different, even if you want to completely shift our days. If you want to shift our mornings, you want to shift our nights, you want to shift our middays. We're going to walk in submission to your Holy Spirit. We're going to be wise and we're going to seek you in all of our ways, never leaning on our own understanding. 
We're leaning upon you, leaning upon your wisdom, because you are a God who speaks. You are a God who gives wisdom. So continue to pour out the wisdom and the knowledge that is directly from above so we can know and understand the season we're in, the seasons that are coming forth ahead, operating them in our fullest potential, not according to our own power, our own might, our own strength, but according to the power that you supply in your spirit our counselor Holy Spirit our counselor our guider we love your voice oh Jesus and we just want to seek you like never before if the morning's busy and we don't have that time we just want to give you that minute that five minutes to surrender and give you that prayer and just to say I surrender this day to you Jesus have your way because the morning's just the morning and we still have the whole day to pray and to seek you, Jesus, and to build the relationship with you. Make our foundation firmer. Continue to build upon that foundation. We may have been with you for a while. And there may just be a tower ahead of us because we're so built up and we're so firm and we're so strong. But we always want to just check up on that foundation and just continue to mold and remold that foundation and strengthen and lay new brick if we need to lay new brick. Because our strength is you, Jesus. Our strength is in your spirit. Hallelujah, Jesus. We give you praise. We give you glory. And I just want to open up the floor. Ask if anyone needs prayer. This is a family. We're always here to pray for you. If you need to surrender something to Jesus. If you need to surrender everything to Jesus. And you just want to come up and surrender it all to Jesus. Maybe it's just your situation. We're a family here. We're always open for prayer. It's nothing but love, never any judgment. Hallelujah. Yes, God. Thank you, Jesus.